<laughs> in a recent interview with our own Collider.com, Batman vs. Superman producer Charles Roven sat down with us to talk about several projects. When it was mentioned that we'd love to see a four-hour cut of the new DC movie, Roven said the following... I don't know if you'll ever get the four-hour version, but there may be something that's coming along that might be slightly less long than that. Mark Byersell that these comments suggest that we're going to get a three-plus-hour director's cut of Batman vs. Superman when the film comes out on home video. Huge buy for me. This is one of the comments that's going to get me to go buy a PS4 or something I can play <laughs> Blu-rays on because I am really going to want that Batman v Superman Blu-ray. I cannot wait to see this film, and once I see it, I'm going to want to know more about what was in the film, what's not in the film, and what they left out that you can see on a Blu-ray or some sort of DVD extra. I cannot wait to see this, and I think it's true. I think I, I, four hours is a long time, but if you get three plus hours of footage, it would be something fun for the true fans <laughs> to sit down and watch all that and go through scenes, because the great thing about watching a Blu-ray cut that's longer than something in theatrical is that you can actually watch the scenes and judge like, oh yeah, I realize why they didn't leave that in there. Oh, that would have been cool, but you can still appreciate the original film, and it just adds to the fun for me. You know what's funny? Uh, quite often and watching these extended cuts make me appreciate what editors do because I'll be honest with you, seven times out of ten, the real theatrical cut is a much better movie than the extended mm -hmm. edition. That's why editors are so important. But every once in a while, like the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, they put a lot of stuff in there. It's like, hey man, that stuff could have been kept in. But I think what you were pointing out is something I completely agree with. Even if it's I watched a three and a half hour extended cut of Batman v Superman, and it's clearly not as good as the theatrical cut. It would make me appreciate, oh, I could see why they cut that out. And you start to get an understanding of the filmmaking process when you see what they didn't use. Right. And that's a really cool thing. Or, or who knows, maybe it'll be fan like even better than the theatrical cut. I buy the fact that he's talking about a director's cut. I don't think he's talking about, I, I really don't buy into the theory that's floating around that he's talking about a, a second theatrical cut, an extended theatrical cut that plays alongside of a regular... I don't buy... There's a little bit of a theory of that going wrong right, huh. right now. I reject that notion. I do think he's talking about a Blu-ray DVD. And, and by the way, full shout-out to uh, to our uh, our dot-com side, Collider.com, for getting that little uh, nugget mm -hmm. out of Roven. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, Schnepp, how do you see this? Well, I almost called him Christian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Christian. Um, I wish I could do that Scooby-Doo. It's really me, Harlow. A Mission Impossible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to invest in a rubber mask for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Zack Snyder is the one of the kings of making an extended cut. Like, if you see Watchmen, then you see his director's cut, and then you see, like, <clears throat> I can't remember what it was called, the ultimate cut, the shipwreck cut, or whatever, the four-hour cut, which has got everything in the cartoon and everything in there. They're all extremely watchable, and none of the segments in in at least his versions of that he made for Watchmen are, oh, I see why they took that out. The only time I felt that was like, oh, I see why they took that out for the theatrical run, but I never thought about it while I was watching it because it's like to make a four hour movie is like you said, you need an intermission or you just, it just is a harder thing to sit through for one entire thing. Like when you're at home, you could take a break, you could pause it. So I think you can go pee. Yeah, is the bottom pee. line here yeah. is it's hard to hold in pee for three and a half hours a very in a theater, thing. and you you're don't want to leave the theater you're because then it. you're going to miss something. But this is one of the ways that you can add to the movie without tainting it. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that you can actually do that. that you can watch a scene like it always goes back to Star Wars with me. But you can go on YouTube and watch like the Return of the Jedi deleted scenes, right. and there's one really cool scene with Luke building his lightsaber, right. and I'm like, that is awesome, and I'm glad it's not in the movie. Right. It just makes yeah. sense for that to not yeah. be in the movie. Yeah. The one of the very few exceptions is Die Hard with a Vengeance. The the, the alternate end of Die Hard with a Vengeance is really cool. Watch it on YouTube, and it's one of those ones where I'm like, maybe they should have put I agree. that one that in was, there. I think that I'm, I'm like better. this. I can't I can't <laughs> tell for sure, but it is awesome. What I would say about the difference between theatrical cuts and and home video cuts is sometimes you the you win both ways. You see the theatrical version, and then let's take Robert Rodriguez's Sin City, where they p basically recut the entire film and took all those intersected. Um, sequences and made them standalone, like one hour, right? Short, right. Like not shorts, one hour films, and so you could see Marv's film, you could see you know all three different films, but as standalones. And I love that experience that I could watch that at home anytime mm. I want, and it's a great thing. Or I'll watch the entire film the way it was meant to be seen in the theater. So for something like this, I'm sure it'll be a 
maybe a two hour, two and a half hour film, but there's going to be an hour of additional scenes that just like built up characters and stuff. There's always that through line and then there's those side characters and their stories always get diminished. It always happens in, all, in almost all scripts and in big budget ones, it happens more. So I'm sure nothing was written to be like, oh, that'll be a deleted scene. It just becomes a deleted scene once they're like, the focus is here, we're going this way. So a I great can't wait. example of that is what happened with the most recent X Men Days of Future Past, totally, right? Totally. Because, you know, and I, by the way, I've still not seen the rogue cut. Everybody's telling me the road cut's great, but a great example of what Schnepp is just talking about, X-Men Days of Future Past, he had all the he had this big scene with a Rogue in it and another additional scene with Rogue mm -hmm. in it, and he just sat back in the end and said, doesn't work for the movie. I think the movie streamlines better if we cut it out. So he cut it out and then put out the Rogue edition where they put it back in, so that's... So how it's I got to see Batman versus Superman first to right. know how much I'd be looking forward to an extended <laughs> right. cut cuz if the movie's fantastic for Redux Ooh. then I don't care about an extended <laughs> edition but I'm holding out hope that that movie's going to be awesome. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel cuz it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.